In this tutorial, we'll be creating a sprite. The sprite is created based on an atlas. Uh, in our last tutorial, we created an atlas for the arena. You can see we have the atlas editor open here. We have two different images we can use. So we're going to create a background for the arena. There's two ways we can do that. The first and easiest way is to do it from the atlas editor. So one, once you have your atlas selected, it's here. You can open it through there or through the window. You just select the texture you want, and it highlights it purple, and then click on Create Sprite. What that does is put the sprite into the game, into the scene, as a four vertices quad, two triangles. And you can view it front and back because the shader I'm using on this is the particles alpha blended. Let's go ahead and set up our camera so that's not right on top of it. see in the game this is what we'd see so you got a sprite so you can use sprites for props uh, things like that that's one way to create a sprite let's go ahead and rename this the arena background now the other way to create a sprite is to go to the game object menu create other smooth move sprite that'll create an empty sprite over here in your hierarchy you can see there's nothing to it it's just an empty empty transform right now Let's go ahead and rename it. Call this target. Now over here in your inspector, you can see this is your sprite properties. First thing we want to do is select the atlas for the sprite. Click on this. We only have one atlas right now, and that's the arena, so let's click on that. Now if we click this button here, it'll open up the atlas for the arena. You can see we have two images. We want the target, so we'll select that. And as soon as we select that, it pops it up here in the in the scene. So it creates the mesh for you. So we've selected that. We don't need this anymore. You can see the pivot of the sprite is right here in the middle. We actually probably want the pivot to be down here since the target's going to be sitting on the ground. We probably would never pivot around that. So let's click on Use Pivot. Click on the Pivot button. It brings up the Pivot Editor window here. There's several features of this. The pivot itself can be changed manually by dragging. You can see as I drag it, it changes the pivot of the image. So if I want this corner here, I click on that and you can see the pivot now at that corner. We'll probably want the pivot somewhere around here. And as you change the pivot, it does change the values up here in the X and Y. These are relative values, so if I go up in the corner, that's half the width this way and half the height this way, so it's about 0.5.5. It's pretty close. We can also pick some preset pivots. If I wanted the actual upper right, I click on this and it goes to 0.5.5 and it anchors it right there. If we wanted other anchors, you can see as I click it, it's changing it over here. But we actually probably want a custom one, so we'll put about right there. These buttons down here allow you to center or zoom if you uh, moved or zoom. Now to move, you can use the left or sorry, the middle mouse button. If you have a three mouse, three button mouse, you can also use the control or command keys depending on if it's a Mac or a PC. And the left mouse button drag. If you have a three mouse button you can use the middle mouse scroll wheel to zoom in and out if you want to fine tune your your pivot. You can also use the scroll down here if you don't have the three mouse or three button mouse sorry. Now if you've dragged away from it and you don't know where your image is you can click the center button it'll just bring it back to the origin. Or if you've zoomed in really tight, you can click the zoom times one button and it'll bring it back to the image's actual size. Some other features, if you're trying to do precise pivot alignment, you can turn on the grid. Now the grid is, is in the settings, I'll show you later in the bone animation area, the grid size, but uh, it shows you that X and Y axis and the grid. Now this purple color in the background 
shows the bounds of the image. You can turn that off if you don't need that, but it could be useful. You just want to know the bounds of your image. So that's how to set the pivot on the spray. Now over here you can set the relative scale. It comes in by default at one times one for each the width and the height. You can change that. Let's say you wanted two times the width. That would give you a larger spray. Let's go and move this to the background so it doesn't get in the way of the target. You can also set the absolute size. You want it in pixels, which will adjust the relative scale if you go back and forth. You can also set the color of the mesh. And if you're using a shader with transparency or alpha, you can set the alpha as well. Sprites can be moved around just like any object. And if you look over here, it actually created a mesh render and a mesh filter and attached the arena material for you because of the atlas that you selected. Okay, that's how to create sprites.